at some point, pretty early on, someone's going to raise the question, are we backed up? Can we recover? Because that's because if you've not got your files, that's going to be your your safety net, right? CTIO 101, business technology, simplified and shared, sponsored by Fairmont Recruitment, hiring technology professionals across the UK and Europe. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people do have backups. It's pretty rare for companies not to have backups. There are, they are out there. It's amazing how many companies actually are reliant on snapshots rather than actual backups. Um, you know, people who are still just prepared for, I guess, the, the physical threats of fires, earthquakes, floods, power outages, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if you need to go and see if you've got a backup you can recover from. And unfortunately, and the, the example I often use is, is if you think of a, going back to your film analogies, John, if you take a, a classic sort of 80s horror film, there's a baby in the house and the, the slasher comes to knock on the door. The first thing he does is he, he cuts the phone line, right? Because you take away people's lifeline, you take away people's safety net and their, their, their ability to get help and get out of the situation. And it's the same thing. They, they come into the network. They're sitting there for six months. They're, they're identifying where the backups are. And they're taking them first because they know that's where you're going to turn. Um, so you're going to need to know when you, when you turn to your backups, inc- hey, are they there? It's incredible. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it's scary because you... you you go to see them. A lot of times you see them and you go, oh, the backups are still there. Great. CEO, don't worry about it. I'll have us back up in, you know, eight hours, 10 hours a day, whatever your, whatever your recovery time is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But how do you know that the backups are clean? Because what if yeah. you spend all that time recovering and the malware just spreads again? They lock you all yes. down and you go yeah. again. This technology which claims to have an immutable backup, so a backup that cannot be changed, what you're saying is, yeah, that backup cannot be changed, but what you've actually backed up has got the malware in it. Is that what you're saying? There's two routes. So yes, you can. You you might have backups that can't be changed, but if they've already if they're already infected, then it's finding it's finding a backup that isn't infected. Yeah. Right? So you want one that can't be changed that is also clean. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's two elements. This. So there's the, there's the element of finding a backup that's clean, but there's also the element of are there any backups left to recover from? Because that would be the yeah. prime goal of the ransomware is if they can delete your backups or take them all, then you've got nothing to recover from. If yeah, got- so they so so you've got a, you've got a backup that's immutable in the sense that it can't be changed, but if they've got sufficient control over it, it can be deleted. If you say immutability is a is a, a let's just say it's a read a write once CD ROM, yeah, yeah. God, I don't know why I've used that analogy, well, that's but that's what it is. We've put our day, yeah. That's we've burnt it. That there's no way you can change that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So whatever happens, we've got it. What they're doing is the equivalent of finding that and then breaking it or taking it away or burning it or, you know, they're, they're, they're actually, is that what they're doing? They're removing those those backups. Yeah, there's, there's lots of ways you can attack an immutable backup. And this is why it's so infuriating to see immutability get chucked around as much as it, it does at the moment. Because immutability is nothing new. It sounds really fancy and exciting and new, but like tapes, yes. tapes are immutable. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, just the, it's just the idea that, this backup cannot be changed. But, you know, as you say, if you've got a, if you have an immutable backup that it sits on, say, a Windows server. Yes, well, if you I can't can encri- get to it. If I can encrypt the server, yeah, I can't change your backups, yeah. but guess what? You so can't actually, get either. Yeah, so the CD-ROMs are, are the, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm speaking to you, and Rob, you're the CEO. Uh, I've no doubt, Rob, this will happen, although I doubt you'll employ me, but let's just pretend you make CEO one day and you do employ me. I'll go, Rob, look, uh, I'm really sorry, we have got the CD-ROMs. First thing you'll be saying is, John, why, why the hell are we using CD-ROMs? And I'll say, well, this is just really good, proven 1990s technology. Um, but they're in a safe, uh, and the ransomware folks have actually also got the key to the safe. We we don't know how they did it. So the immutable copies are in there, but we can't get to them because they've the safe. They've got the keys to. Is that am I that, we, am I going to get in trouble with that analogy? No, that that's spot on, John. And guess what? You you pay the ransom to get those keys back, don't you? Yeah, the first, exactly. The first thing. So, so I wanted to throw something. I wanted to throw something at you at this point, Rob. This, this is with one of the things we talk about immutability. So, I've been in a scenario where I've had to restore, mm-hmm. not through uh, a ransom, but through a, a really, really significant nasty outage, mm-hmm. and um, I learnt something really important, which is where you think, where you tell your business to store their data. Yeah, and where you set up to say, that's where the backup is. You know, we all we use this system, and that's where the backup and that's that's where stuff goes, isn't 
actually where everyone keeps their information. It's, you know, there's this saying, which is there's, there's many, many processes in a business. There's the, the process that the CEO thinks happens. There's the process that the IT director reckons. And there's the process that the quality person thinks. Yeah. There's the actual process that happens on a Tuesday. There's the, the compliant process. There's the process that was written down. And they're all different. You know, that, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of approach. Well, I think the same with data. So a lot of companies will have a core system of some sort, some sort of enterprise system uh, you know, whatever it is, it's the stated, this is how we're going to operate. And as long as you make sure your activities are in this system, they will then get backed up, you know, regardless of the problems we've just described. If you don't have that, if you have systems that aren't compliant in the first place, then that data isn't going to be in the backup no, in I'm the first place. Now that might coincidentally help you, but it probably won't because the whole reason why we're reaching for the backup is because everything else has just got blasted. Yeah. Yeah, and, and remember, you know, if you might have the unstructured data, you might have the backups in different places, but always remember these gangs have done their work, they've seen where everything goes, and they they know it, and and they've been there for ages. That's yeah. it, and you know, I don't know when when you had to see this recovery, John, but obviously we're in a world now where people are working on sometimes personal devices, sometimes work devices, they're at home in the office. They have access yeah. to SaaS apps. They have access to cloud storage. Yeah, data can get to a lot of places, and a lot of people can be can be unaware of what that data is, where it's going, yeah. how it's been stored in yeah. place. So just because you've got that that backup doesn't mean doesn't mean your your you know your life raft is going to even float. <laughs> going back to the threat of those backups, you know we touched on the fact that you could just lock down the immutable backup, but there's other clever tricks they can do. So maybe you haven't got it set on a Windows host that can be encrypted or whatnot, but maybe you haven't got MF, you maybe you've got MFA on some of your critical applications, but you haven't got it on your backup. So they just get into your backups and they start playing around with maybe retention policies. You know, they just, they can't affect your backups, but they can just change the retention policies, make the backup device think it's been 30 days, 12 months, whatever yeah. it needs to do to wipe them. Which is, which is probably the the, mo the cleverest way of doing it because then you just get the policy to do the dirty work uh, and it might not even come up as being unusual because it's it the policy it happening in the background. It's, it's, doing so what it's, it's very do, quietly. Right? And then you just wait. And then you wait for a, enough gap between you know the last successful backup and when you want to strike to then have that, that corpus of, 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 of information that then is then vulnerable to the attack. Another one, Rob, to throw at you, is um you know uh the the we get a lot of great technology to to to, to work with uh and that we do make pretty serious claims about its efficacy uh and no, no i don't think anyone lies but sometimes people get a bit lost in uh achieving the effectiveness of some software requires quite a lot of in-depth knowledge mm -hmm. configuration setup you know there's a context around it etc so is it also a case that with with these sorts of technologies that you may have bought everything that you were meant to buy, but you didn't set it up right. Yeah, you know, it's like a configuration issue. So you get, you know, someone in the infrastructure team is just it's just gone very pale and said, "Well, it was meant to happen, but we we haven't yet finished that part of the project, and actually we hadn't even switched on the." I'm going to say the immutable flag, but we've we've already been there with that. But it could be some sort of form of protection or some some element of it. Uh, which means that um, we didn't even really have the protection in the first place. We had the potential of it, but we never got around to configuring it properly, or we didn't understand it. Is that, exactly. is that a risk? It, it comes down to the the organisation's approach and and view of those backups. Are they are they viewing those backups as just a, a business as usual task they've got to do? It's just an operational task. Again, tick box exercise. Yes, we've backed up. We've done that. Or are they treating this as a data protection exercise for if yeah. they need to? you know, invoke business continuity and that's See, Yeah. We shouldn't be saying we've backed up. We should be saying, um, we're ready to restore. That it's, should exactly be it. literally the, the mind, the mindset should be, yeah, we're in a position to restore, not a, yeah, tick, uh, the such and such, uh, has been backed up. No one, no one backs up to back up. You only back up to no. recover. So why yeah, do you focus yeah. just on the backup piece? You should be focusing on that. Yeah. On that recovery. It's amazing. It's, I mean, it happens everywhere, doesn't it? But that is a proper uh, uh, example of meeting the target but missing the point. Absolutely. And this is why it's so important to have these conversations early on in depth. Because if you're if you work in in IT operations, as you say, whilst everyone's getting more prone and savvy to security requirements and and these needs, again. You've got different objectives. You've got you've been given different KPIs. You've got different yeah. expectations of you. So you're viewing it of right. Yeah. You know how can I make this as 
as efficient as possible. Whereas if you can have a, a security team look at it and go, right, well, hold yeah. on. This is essentially our last You're line absolutely of right. Here. Yeah. There's so much of this is, um, this is about having a whole system approach. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. Um, and, and, and I think, uh, kind of getting into the rehearsal space, having, building a really, really positive relationship with, between cyber operations, IT operations, knowing what to do. Um, and I think, you know, having a mentality, which is about, yeah, we can restore rather than we've backed up. And, and I think also, you know, never, ever be, you know, be careful that you don't catch yourself about becoming complacent with a silver bullet. You have to ask those extra questions, additional things. It's not good enough to say, okay, ransomware hits, have we got backups? Yes, and to go, right, what if we couldn't have yeah. backups? What if, you know, if we talk about the SMB market, if we're, you know, a smaller organization for a smaller team, what if what if Jamie's on holiday? What if he's at, yeah. like, who, who does all the backups and we can't reach that system? Yeah. Like, have we got a single point of failure? All these different areas there. Yeah. Like, how well, do we... Yeah. And, and again, you know, the folks, if, they've, if they're really in there, they might know uh, when Jamie's holiday is coming up. It's right? an Outlook, they can see it and they go, right, we'll wait till, exactly. wait till he goes. Well, yeah, the access Outlook via the web with no MFA in place. You know, you just, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Okay, cool. So where, where are we on the, um, on the scenario? Is it like three in the morning? We're all coffeeed out. We're all kind of, we're getting that point where you're not quite believe what's happened uh you get the you know you get the you constantly get that moment like i said about it's okay we'll have a cup of tea and you turn the tap on there's no water there's mm -hmm. a there's a th that's happening a lot because you you a lot of your tech that you're using and increasingly the telephone uh with the other with the you know with the with the uh, ransom uh, folks on the other end of the phone is starting to become uh you know it's catching your eye more and more because you're you're sort of running out of 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 runway yeah, and they're going to want to apply the pressure as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, whilst you're trying to retrieve these backups or deal with your backup state or, or react to it, that deadline you got given maybe 72 hours, 24 hours, don't be surprised if that suddenly gets reduced to nine hours, eight hours. You know, they want to, you know, increase the clock. They might start going, you know, to relate back to what we're talking about sensitive data, start saying, look, we know we can see you trying to restore, but guess what? We've already got all your customers, you know, yeah, passport details, credit that's why. That's why I think... That's why I think anyone who might take that call should have some sort of specific resilience training. They should, you should definitely get someone on a room, you know, on a team's call, get someone in to do the, to play that other side. Cause I think that just going there, just sort of half experiencing that mm. pressure, I think would be a very good, um, you know, just to try and keep your, keep your head, you know? And, um, but there's also the fact that like, they may, they may, branch out to other routes of communications they might start bringing other stakeholders in they might just go to all company like to start putting a bit more panic you know again if you're lower down the chain as an employee worried about your, yeah. your job and you start putting the pressure yeah. on you start yeah. you might ring your local newspaper so and start bringing out like there's, there's lots of different ways they can apply that pressure um to try and ramp up as you say ramp up a successful payment okay so um so we're in there um we, we've we, so are we going to do a branch now where we've paid and where we haven't paid should we do that as a as a what the consequences might be yeah or do so, we want to get more into prevention are we going to do prevention at some point aren't we so, i know i'm not saying anything's 100 percent, but the sort of things we can do to just yeah, stop there is, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, we'll put a bit of light at the end of the tunnel after we've uh ah, thanks gone through all this stress i'll be able to sleep tonight hopefully <laughs> yeah um well i mean yeah in terms of in terms of impact to the business it's it's going to vary between organization and organization, but the the key thing, and again, we said at the top of the top of the discussion was that that ransom payment is very unlikely going to be your biggest impact. And that if you make the payment, um, so as I say, if you do get on the route of making the payment, which normally happens either as I say, you do it straight away as a reaction or you haven't been able to understand the blast radius. You haven't been able to analyze the, the scope of the threat. You haven't been able to retrieve you know, viable backups, all the recovery time is so long that it's not yeah. actually justified. Those will lead you to paying the ransom. I mean, Rob, if you were really sophisticated, you would deliver to the CIO the business case um, because you do all your prep and you would just show the ransom that you need to pay uh, plus the uh, versus the damages that they're going to be occurring. You know, you mean if you really wanted to kind of lay it on thick, that's what you would say. 
um, you know, to make that decision really quickly. But that's what you're saying, isn't it? it there, there'll be a point where you'll realise the way they've engineered it is the the ransomware might be a rounding error compared to what the consequences are. Um, it just happens that that ransomware is significant funds for the criminals. You know, there's a there's a there's a point where it might even become transactional. It becomes like digital protection money, and every month they come around for the, you know, for the protection. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm just I'm just, I'm just going into of, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely but digital digital mobsters. The, the thing you can be, the thing you can fall victim of, which to be fair, what we're doing right now is you get tunnel vision of the immediate impact. So every cost we mentioned there is probably a, a year one cost of a ransomware attack. As you say, it's that immediate downtime. It's the need to recover. Yeah. It's the ransom payment. It's the, yeah. you know, the, the audits and that kind of thing. You're then going to have a further sort of two years probably of getting ready for, for legal issues. You're going to need consultancy. You're going to probably review all your security procedures, infrastructure. There's going to be investments there. You're going to have sort of, um, you know, brand and image. The cyber, insu- the cyber insurance, that that that's also a consideration, isn't it, for year two or beyond? Yeah, your insurance so, so premium you, would go up. You might get lucky and have cyber insurance help you with the year one costs. And I say you might get lucky if anyone's ever had any dealing with an insurance company in any capacity. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They're, they're not. They're not. Well, they're, they're, Two, four, the business the model money. isn't designed to pay out loads of money. Yeah. No. Um, um, so you've got legal. Uh, you've got the security review, legal implications, GDPR. You know, mm-hmm. there, there could be all sorts of um, damage, potential damage that you've 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 inadvertently caused. Yeah. You know, because the data that you're that you're looking after on behalf of someone else, you've you've given out cyber insurance. You mentioned brand. So you got the you got the brand impact. What's that going to have on your your revenue streams? How are you going to yeah. be able to recover? I mean. All these areas that you're talking about is like a kind of like a, you know, what happens to a company when they have a major PR disaster? Yeah. You know, that's the, it's 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 up there. It could be like, you know, when if there's a recall of a product, you know, that's dangerous or something like that. It's right up there with the, you know, these are these are very, very big events that can impact uh, the, 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 the total value of the company. It, yeah, it's precisely negatively. that. And, it, and as well, you've got to remember that you're, you know, as a... As members of the public, we're becoming more and more educated in the importance of our, our data and where it's used, and, and all these things. It's getting more and more in the public eye, so people are responding. If you were um, if you were in the professional services space, Rob, uh, or you're doing public to sector tendering or any tendering process, um, there's normally a stock question in a tender that says, you know, are you in litigation with any existing customers? You know, those, those sorts mm-hmm. of things. I can imagine in a tender, this might be common. It's been a, a couple of years since I've done a tender, but um, it might say, "Have you ever, you know, has your business ever been subject to ransomware, and have you paid?" You, do you know what I mean? There could be. I mean, that could be a very interesting piece of due diligence, couldn't it, in the M and A space? Yeah, and it would be interesting because I guess how would you, how would you really legislate that? Because I say, if you've already avoided letting anyone know you made that payment, kept under the radar, like where does that? fall in terms of making those declarations again you'd... yeah I'm, I'm pretty certain it'd be it'd be material mm. you know it's a material you've got to reveal it if it's something that's uh, especially if you're saying 60 percent get you know get approached again um you know th- there is a potential there isn't there yeah 100 percent um and yeah to say that we, that we only got sort of years years one and two there say so you'd normally go on for another three four five six seven in terms of rebuilding reputation, rebuilding business activities, say continued investment. And a lot of these costs as well we're talking about aren't necessarily like, you know, the fallout It's not necessarily getting sued, having to pay big legal costs, although that is a big part of it. It's having to pay the advisors, the consultants, the lawyers, the external people come in and do full orders and that kind of thing. And it just it ramps up and up and up. And it feels like a problem that you can't get away from when, as I say, yeah. when you talk about the problem in your head, you only picture that first, Yes. 20 days, maybe. Yeah. But it's yeah. something you're going to have to wear on your back for, for years and years no, you, and years. You're absolutely right. That's like what I said at the beginning. Remember, it's this sort of, you know, the ransomware letter you pay or whatever. The person gets returned, thankfully, and everyone's happy, and that's the end of it. This is much more insipid, isn't it? It's like that super tanker. Uh, it's got all this momentum that you just mm-hmm. can't stop. You know, when you encounter it, it's too late because it's just too too powerful to stop um okay um how how close are we rob to light at the end of the tunnel um you know are we are we still 
we still and the uh, there's that uh, saying the darkest hour is the hour before dawn um which i love but recently i think i heard it on the telly someone said the darkest hour is the hour before total oblivion <laughs> which is a slightly different is a little bit glass half empty i'm more of the hour before dawn sort of person but um it is, uh, yeah, it's the strange thoughts that, that, that are going through my mind, Rob, as I'm trying to sort of immersing myself in the scenario. It, it, it's tricky, and so much of it is how you, A, how you prepared for it and how you respond to it. Um, it. It is a very, it's a business defining and it's a career defining event. So you tend to find, um, there tend to be big, large events of attrition. A lot of people uh, will either make or break their careers based on how they respond to that. A lot of people just get burnt out from the stress of dealing with it and have to change jobs or whatnot. So on an individual basis, there's... And, and just if anyone hasn't been there for burnout, um, we're talking about people who... I mean, I heard some anecdotes, okay, so I'm not giving any secrets away. This was just anecdotes I'd heard. But in some scenarios, folks were hadn't gone home for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. They were sleeping under desks because uh, they were just doing absolutely everything they possibly could to try and prevent or mitigate or, you know, beat the attack. Uh, but as the days and weeks went on, there's just, you know, they couldn't stop it. So, I mean, that, that's that's really, that's going to really affect you badly because you're, you're, you're a professional, you're an engineer, you're doing everything you think you can do, but you're, but you're not, you're doing the two steps forwards, three steps backwards. And it's, and it's, you know, th- I think that's, we should have a lot of respect for people who've been through the early ones. And often- um, you know, and, and actually, you know, just a shout out to those folks. Um, once, if they do recover and they're ready for getting into operational life again, albeit maybe in a different company, you know, these are people who've really been there and done it. So they're actually extremely valuable folks to have on the team because they, they've lived it. Um, and I, you know, my hope is that some of those folks will probably end up being very successful, you know, potentially robbing companies like yours and other companies because they can start to advise on the pain points because they've actually, there's nothing like having been through one, I would imagine. No, completely. You, you become invaluable in that, in that fight against the attacks. And I think the conversations when you speak to people who have been in the heart of an incident versus people who are just aware of the threat the way yeah, people discuss totally it, the way people react is, is, is so different and yeah, yeah Zeka, like yeah. your heart goes out to people have to deal with it and remember these are people who you know we go we made that joke about cios not signing up to be a hostage negotiator but equally you know this level two security analyst did not sign up to carry the weight of the business on their shoulders for you know four yeah. sleepless nights or three weeks or however long yeah, it, yeah. it goes on for and it's yeah it's a huge amount of pressure because then, the the fallout yeah. of these attacks have have, have impact on society that's the, that's the fact. Yeah, and, 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 you know, pressure, I mean, you know, we, we, we know we're all under this enormous amount of, of pressure in this in the world that we that we currently live in uh, and all the things that we've been through. Um, yeah, and folks, like you say, they're not mentally prepared uh, for it. And, and actually, some of them shouldn't be. Like you say, they should be, just should not be put in that position in the first place. But they were kind of like the... Um, I don't know if anyone's going to remember this phrase, but there's the phrase of the Bobby on the beat. So they were the they were the single policeman that arrived at the scene of the huge accident, who's just basically waiting for the serious incident. You know, everyone to turn up, but they've got to hold it together for that initial um, moment uh, or moments and keep keep it and keep as calm as possible. So yeah, um, yeah, uh, you know, kudos to them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um... But yeah, I guess let's talk about how to avoid them, how to how to not let on, happen, how to not have a horrible time and burn out and and pay ransom yes. and, and all these all this doom and gloom we've covered. Um, yeah, and you know, this security is a a huge landscape, so I won't even attempt to to tackle it. We'll, we'll talk very high level and I guess split it off into two key categories. You want to focus on probability, and you want to focus on impact, right? So probability is you just want to reduce the chances of a successful attack happening. And that's essentially with your, but mainly with your perimeter security, right? That's building the walls around your data, around your organization, around your methods in order to keep these bad actors, this malware, these malicious attacks out 
so there's all the standard stuff your email security your you know your your antivirus your threat hunting your firewalls all these these different areas they're going to build walls and there's some really fantastic technologies out there now and the you know the the lengths we've gone to and you know the capabilities we've got now with between machine learning ai and these things to help with intelligent threat detection and not rely on you know things like signatures and, and whatnot is huge um and actually the more you invest in that the the, the stronger your defenses are the, the higher your walls will be the problem you have is you build a high wall they'll build a higher ladder right you're still a target and you, you think of all the high profile examples an, that are out there it's an arms race yeah you, you know no, yeah. none of these none of these big businesses that get hit by ransomware are sat there without any without firewalls without any yeah. antivirus yeah or basically exactly like yeah um yes yeah the, the the second part of the probability which is a, a huge piece and it's a, again to get a lot more attention in recent years it's the education of your your employees and your users because again that's going to be your biggest threat. That's the that's the easiest entry point. Is an ignorant, a curious, a, a greedy yeah. employee because we all like yeah. being nosy. We like free stuff. We're not always yeah. concentrating too much. Um, yeah, this is the this is the sort of very subtle background social engineering. Mm -hmm. This is this is getting in at the initial stages of of of, of infiltrating your systems, pretty much through human activity curiosity um not being alert uh clicking on links and like you say free downloads i mean pretty much every firewall on the planet has a rule that says it stops free anything that's free it just stops it <laughs> um but then you know if you've got if you haven't got the right balance um in the culture of your business and you're you know people are like look i want to have access to this i might need to do mm -hmm. xyz um that's where you've got to have a mature relationship with the business um about what you uh, what you allow to occur but i think um the picture you've painted rob about the attack that's the picture you've got to you've got every board should go through this and every every md uh C ceo of, of an sme should go through this with his his or her top team this scenario you've just described because um, we'll get we'll get a bit more into you know what, what you were talking mm -hmm. about. But I just wanted to 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 to, to lay something over on what you just said. Mm -hmm. You talked about probability and impact. Mm -hmm. So w what I'm imagining is is for me to build the business case to fund you know this this prevention. We've got the probability and impact, which you know working with yourself, we'd be able to fill in probability, impact, etc. What I would do over the top of it, and forgive me, Rob, if you were going to say this in any case, but over the top of that, I would overlay ability to control and i would do it in three ways i would say what's our ability to control it right now yeah you know you might just do one two three you know mm -hmm. do, you, you don't want to over engineer these things no. uh, a one two three three is no ability whatsoever one is total control just a sort of an approximation so what's our ability to control now what is the uh is there technology available that would allow us to improve that so literally, is there technology available or is it simply a risk, you know? Um, and then uh, the third one would be, um, uh, uh, w you know, what's, w what's the cost uh, yeah. of that technology? So what you'd then have a do is you'd look at probability impact. You'd say, this is what we can tr control at the moment. Uh, this is the total space we could control and it would cost us this much, but it still leaves this uncovered and this, and typically, this area that's uncovered is probably our human behaviour. We can mitigate against it, but we can never ever uh, stop it. There's always going to be different routes. I mean, it's very simple, but maybe that. Then you lay back to the board for the investment case, and you say, "Look, this is what we can control now, and actually, um, what we can control now will mitigate this type of ransomware attack, but it won't mitigate all of them. Or, or, or actually, we're still very vulnerable." You know, you, you, you make an assessment and then you say, but however, with the investment that we put, that we can put in place, we can change our, you know, our, our risk goes from here to here. So that, yeah, no, I, I don't want to be no, no, over simplistic, no, no, but I'm trying to sort of build on top of your probability impacts really important because obviously that makes you, you don't sweat the, the you know, you don't look in the wrong area mm -hmm. and you're focusing on the, it's most likely to happen. It's going to have a big impact, but it's that then ability to control yeah completely. The, the it, it comes to down to, to your, control analogy it comes down to your ability to execute in these areas um 
Yeah. And it comes down to your your attitude towards the risk and the what you deem to be the risk to your to your business. So, yeah, your your capability, how much is, how much is going to cost comes into it because I say you, there's no point investing millions and millions and millions to try and save a you know a very small turnover business. Um, yes. You know, I've heard examples before where it's been cheaper to rebuild a data center than it has been to recover an organization. It's, it's getting those, well, those yeah, different... Yeah, but, um, but the other scary thing, when you say that, Rob, you know, we look at it and we say, you know, we've done this exercise and I'm making this number up, but we think it's going to cost 15 million. Um, and then we know that the ransomware that we're, we, we, we're, that we're most likely to get is for half a million. Mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but this starts to become a pay the ransomware in the business case as an option line. I mean, I'm not saying well, this, it should be, but, no, 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 but you're, you're right, but some, think, some people that are money minded would look at that straight away and go, well, hang on a minute, John, if we did that, that's effect at, at current rates, that's 15 years worth of ransomware. You know, aren't we better just paying? I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. No, no, it, it, do you, do you it, see where, it's, completely, where... it's completely right. And actually, it's a really good point because it relates into then where that approach is mitigating the impact is so important. So we covered a lot about the probability about keeping people out, which is where most people jump to, first of all, how do we stop these things getting in? You're right, it yeah. comes down to a point you've got to have a, a balance between what's worth the ransom versus the downtime. So when you look at the impact, actually, the conversation there is how quickly can my business recover? So if you focus time and attention on having a safe, impenetrable set of backups, plus the ability to accelerate your instant response to know what you're dealing with and accelerate that recovery as a result, that's what's going to lower the downtime cost versus their ransom payment. And that's how you're going to beat the ransomware attackers. So you put up all your probabilities, stop them coming in. So you're only going to have to deal with, you know, a smaller number of, of attacks, but work off the basis that, you know, if people didn't see this coming already, that you've really got to have the attitude of not if, but when, if we can lower that impact by mitigating all the facts we went through, making it easy for teams to react to things, making it easy for teams to understand the risk and making it easy for the business to recover, then suddenly those ransom payments aren't as scary. I, I, I get you. I'm, I'm taking notes, by the way, because um, I wanted to, um, you know, this. I think we said it earlier as well when we said, don't ask the question, have you backed up? You ask the question, can you recover? Mm-hmm. And you've just you've just double under, underlined that. So your mentality needs to be, in the how, how fast can we recover and making sure that that where you're recovering from is safe um but uh i wanted to run past you you know in in a modern business now i mean there's no such thing as a single modern business that's such a stupid <laughs> generalization but in in businesses i've worked in the amount of data that's in play uh can be measured in petabytes um and i i first uh, encountered a petabyte in 2004, I think it was, um, and it was to do with uh, a lossless a storage of images, um, absolutely ginormous. And um, they, they had a presentation, they were trying to explain how big a petabyte was. <laughs> and the best we could come up with, and th- there might be someone who might comment on this being inaccurate, but the best that they came up with was, if you take a single galaxy the number of stars that exist within a galaxy is kind of how you kind of count up to a petabyte. So sort of, you know, imagining it as they're absolutely ginormous. So you can measure normally the number of petabytes in a decent sized company will be measured, you know, maybe in less than 10 or something like that, but it's still massive. So the technology, Rob, is it there that you can still recover quickly, but scale and size and you can deal? I mean, I know uh, zettabytes are being discussed by, you know, the, the petabytes would be folks uh, from certain industries which would laugh at petabytes, but it is enormous, massive amounts of, of data. Yeah. And is that a problem? So naturally it does. For the tech. It does, it does pose some challenges, but the, the important thing is not to focus on mass recovery. Um, I mean, you can, you know, the technology is there to, to recover at mass very quickly, but actually the, the key thing when it comes to business continuity is identifying what your critical applications and critical workloads are. Yeah, it's your working process, isn't it? And get, yeah, and getting them up, not only getting them up quickly, but getting them up in the right order. That sounds silly, but you need to orchestrate it to make sure that you're bringing up the right apps in the right order so that they work together so you can get yeah. your core business functions online. No, no, I, I, I get it. But, you know, some businesses have to keep data for regulatory reasons. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so that uh, uh, others keep uh, data for that plus the just in case. Yeah. Um, so so when you're running the business, that this restore strategy needs to be restoring the stuff that the business is running on this month. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be bringing back stuff that you've have you know you may need to use from an archive of six years ago so this is this is like you're saying you're you've got to be very very pointed about your recovery strategy yeah uh, we, we, to, get, we, to, to prioritize it to get the company up and running it's, it's 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 as i say it comes back to that point of it's recovery in a business continuity situation that that's the important yeah. thing we're not looking to bring back as you say archives from 12 years ago that we've got for legislation reasons that no one is ever going to look at it's not about just Right, we've been hit, yep. let's just bring everything back to make sure it's safe. It's going right. What does our business need to run? What does it need to you know, how do we stop the revenue being implicated? How do we keep the yep. shareholders happy? Let's get let's get it back up and running because... Could you could you put something into your data? Could you put a signature into your data so that when it was shared in the dark web or wherever it surfaced, there would be a fingerprint on it to show that it had come through an unofficial means sort of like a by the way like i just smart water that they used to like I, tag I, things in, yeah in schools i thought stuff. i just invented i thought i just invented that live on this call rob but um and if it is a thing that nobody wants to talk about we don't have to <laughs> but do you see what i mean is there something is there something we can do to kind of infect the ransomers so that um they might not unite might not you might not be able to trace them through the pattern of the transaction because of bitcoin and the, and the ledger and everything is just impossible but maybe you can do it at least. Uh, anyway, I'm not. I'm not suggesting Rob. We we brainstorm that one right now. But it's just. It's, a, no, it's, it's a really just, good. Just it was just a thought. It's a really good good thought, and there's probably a few people listening absolutely screaming about how this would be done or how you can't do it or whatnot. I mean, I I don't actually know myself, but what I would say. But I think is, I like the. Uh, yeah. Oh, what, what I would say is actually that for the for the gangs, uh, you know, they're, they're already sophisticated criminals. They're already spinning up and spinning down very quickly, moving around, stopping yeah. being tracked. At the end of the day. Your data's gone. The, the you can you can no, no, tag I, it, yeah. but I don't think. Yeah, problem, no, I don't think the smart it. water. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I totally get it. So I, I wasn't. Uh, you, you're trademarking um, smart water. We're kind of smart, smart data water, or whatever we're going to call <laughs> it. Um, where I was coming from was more of a strategic countermeasure to the to the, the sector, wider problem, yeah. yeah, to the active to, to to the twenty billion dollars a year market, because that's not going to stop you. But it, but if it was something that everyone signed up to, you know, it might it might start to create a a bit of a blueprint. But anyway, we're just um, inventing something. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't exist. Um, so 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 let's 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 get grounded again. Uh, sorry, Rob, for going down all these rabbit holes. Um, so yeah, light light at the end of the tunnel. So we're focusing on uh, being able to recover uh, quickly, but also making sure that the the where we where we're recovering from is absolutely squeaky clean lovely protected not infected just you know yeah you how on earth do you do that don't don't just focus on you know the technicality of how quickly i can get my data back up you know how good's my lines all these kind of things you the the key point to the recovery strategy is the that instant response part that i mentioned earlier you need to be able to assess the data assess the problem know exactly where that that ransomware is infected so you can isolate those files and not not bring them back online to affect the others. Um, you need to have an idea of, you know, where it got in, you need to have an idea of what data has been compromised, you can react with that as well. It's that whole analysis and investigation piece before you then bring up what you need to spin back up to bring your business back online. It's, it's finding the equilibrium between the between the two. It's the, it's the key route to recovery. Cool. Um, and yeah, I guess the, the the final thing, which again isn't the final thing, as we've mentioned it so many times, but it is. It's all about that preparation. It's all about that run throughs. It's all about asking the difficult questions. It's all about running through every stage of the business. Because if you prepare in times of peace, when war happens, you'll be you'll be ready to deal with it. And that's yeah. the key thing: is just treating it with the the understanding and the respect that these incidents deserve. I guess because yeah. they, the impacts are catastrophic sometimes. And 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 uh, and Rob, your organisation, um, you you provide. Um, uh, I know you do lots of things, uh, but one of the things I think you do is like a simulation, uh, or you or you run events. I don't know if you do it specifically for uh, like an individual customer, or if you have events where you invite people in. But d don't you guys do 
you know the run the scenario so folks are kind of going through uh the process you're trying to basically sort of do a version of of this podcast but 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 with folks around a table and phones ringing yeah, and it, it, it's spot on so we do we run um live interactive role plays of, of what it's like to be in a visitor ransomware attack um when people hear that, I think they they immediately cringe up a bit and get a bit, you know, they, it's the, the standard British response. They're worried. Like, no chance am I doing that. But um, I've, I mean, I've done it. I've done it three times myself, and each time yeah. I've learned something new from it, and it's um, a really yeah. valuable way of, of living, living that ransomware attack. Abs- seeing the CIO's response, seeing the CEO's response, seeing other business teams respond. Do you know, um, having spoken to you tonight about this, mm-hmm. it makes me want to do to go through that process. But before speaking to you. There's a nervousness about being a senior professional engineer yeah. and somehow not knowing the answer makes me, you know, you know, there's a little bit of that kind of um, stupid hubris or professional pride that gets in the way of saying, actually, we don't, we've, I haven't encountered it, he says, touch wood. Um, but I do know from my major incident management days that rehearsal is such an important part of of preparation, scenario planning, and rehearsals, um, and and I think we, you know the the, the triple uh, jeopardy mm-hmm. that you des- described, which I think we got to quadruple or even whatever whatever the one is after <laughs> that. Um, but those sorts of things, that's that is the sort of stuff that really will come out um, during a. So is it, it, it needs to be a pretty safe environment, yeah? It's no, no one's getting judged. There isn't like a report going back to you no, saying, just, I'm sorry. It, John, John was fine after he stopped crying um, or, you know, that, you know that, sort of, that sort of thing, is it? No, like, like, I mean, I think like anything that, that actually brings change and, and, you know, and helps people move forward, you, know, you need to leave your pride at the door. You need to go to the open mind and it is a safe space for everyone to interact and understand and have these Absolutely. difficult conversations um, that you wouldn't necessarily typically have. And again, have yourself challenged because yeah. if you run through the simulation yourself, no one's there to pick up on, on your flaws. Um, and it's just a, I think it's a really eye opening opportunity to, to do that. And um yeah, yeah, we do. We, we we run them publicly, or say if if people do want to do them for an individual of the company, we're more than happy to come in and and run run through them. So, so Rob, will it be all right if in the description um, we on the podcast, uh, sorry, on the YouTube channel, we can put in the description uh, uh, contact details or something if uh, folks wanted to reach out to you for you know to 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 talk about that. Um, what do you want to say to the podcast listeners? Because there are folks who just listen to the podcast and don't go to YouTube. You know, it's, it's not YouTube's not for everyone. A lot of people. Um, I've, I've heard uh, someone, I think, did three of three three episodes on a car journey. You know, oh, so wow. it's a sort of listening in. So uh, I was thinking, wow, that's. Uh, I was trying to work out where, where where they were driving to for for three episodes. But um, how would they how would they reach out to you, Rob? Um, yeah, absolutely. So. You know, we um, we've run through a lot of fairly, as we as we sort of said, fairly difficult topics. They say there's fairly sort of stressful things we have to think about. And if it's something you want to learn about a little bit more, um, where I work and where where we partner with companies where we help them is is really about that impact piece that I spoke about at the end. It's all about mitigating yeah. the the impacts of a successful attack and helping businesses to recover. So what I would say is, if you do want to learn a little bit more, have a have a conversation. Um, probably the easiest way is to is to reach out over LinkedIn um, and, and yeah. contact me. So we, um, my name's Rob Ed, and I'll pop up smiling. Um, yeah. Don't Google me and because we'll, there's, I'll, some, I'll, uh, there's some horrendous articles about a criminal in Scotland who's done some pretty horrible things. So don't Google it. Put me into LinkedIn. It's a, a safer space. Okay. Well, actually, to be honest with you, Rob, you do want people to Google because the more they Google you, you'll oh, end up uh, ranking higher. <laughs> You literally, you and then and then that 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 other Rob will go below the fold, as they say, and and you know you'll you'll be cool. So uh, I'll just have to, I'll we'll have to go uh, through that. At the end of the day, we're engineers, and there is a technology stack, mm-hmm. and there's probably a few technology stacks to think about. You know, the whole point you were making about immutability, saying, well, actually, John, it's not that new. Think of a tape, CD-ROM, that sort of thing. Yeah. So if um, equally, if someone wanted to reach out to talk to you about the technology stack that goes around that focusing on recovery and making sure your backups are lovely pristine safe you know that 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 technology element is that also something that people can reach out to you for via linkedin yes yes absolutely um 
yeah. as I say, we we tend to have the conversation around the matter first, and then we don't leave you hanging in yeah. the dark. We have we have technologies that will help you mitigate that impact. So, um, yeah. so yeah. So whether it's just one of you just want to have a, a chat about it a little bit more, or as you say, if you're interested in any sort of the the live experiences or role yeah. plays we can help with, or if you want to talk about the technology stack, then I'd say, yeah, reach out. More than happy to set up any meetings, calls, Brilliant. discussions, whatever. Um, we really value it. Well, look, massive thanks, Rob. For, I know it's taken a while, mainly on my part. You know, I've had a few interruptions, uh, unfortunately, because we were going to do this, I think, quite a, quite a bit earlier, like two months ago, I think. It's been a bit of time in the making, first... but it's, no, it's, it's, it's yeah, been great. I really, uh, really appreciate you having me. It's been, uh, been very enjoyable. Well, uh, I've really enjoyed it as well, and um, I just want to say to you, it's been a little bit torturous watching you quaff uh, a few sips of beer. I'm guessing that was beer. Uh, here's me. I'm dutifully waiting until we've finished our session. I've got, I've really got a couple of cold ones in the fridge, uh, ready to have on on a Friday evening. But seriously, Rob, uh, massive thanks to you. Remember, prevention is better than cure. There are lots of ways you can tip the balance in favor of not paying by improving your perimeter critically focusing on how quickly you can recover and contain. Subscribe to the channel now to get access to a catalog of business technology topics that are easy to digest and share. Click the icon of John's face, such a handsome fellow. Honestly, some of the things they program me to say. CTIO 101. Business technology simplified and shared. Subscribe now. Sponsored by Fairmont Recruitment. Hiring technology professionals across the UK and Europe.